Day 27. Do you love me? Why did Peter decide to go fishing? Was it just to have something to eat? Perhaps something was eating at him. People who like to go fishing often say that part of the attraction is that when you're out on the water, you forget all your problems. That may explain why Peter went fishing. Now, what problems could Peter have had? After all, hadn't he rejoiced with everyone else when the Lord appeared? Hadn't he also experienced the gift of forgiveness when the Lord said, Peace be with you? Indeed he had. So what's the problem? The problem is that Peter hadn't forgiven himself. He clearly remembered how he denied the Lord in Anna's courtyard. He knew he'd been a terrible friend. So, despite the Easter joy, Peter suffered a hidden sorrow. A sorrow that, I suggest, came out on the night of fishing. In other words, while he was, it was dark and no one else could see, I believe Peter silently shed some tears in secret. But I don't think they really were a secret. The other disciples, having spent three years with Peter, had seen the sorrow in his eyes and his demeanor. The always perceptible John had noticed it when the Lord appeared to them in the upper room, because Peter wasn't at the front as usual. Rather, he stood at the distance. Sure, he rejoiced with everyone else, but he felt the weight of the threefold denial. In that case, Peter's heart may have been like that of a formerly unfaithful husband, who, even after repentance and forgiveness, still feels burdened by the goodness and beauty of the beloved he betrayed. So, the disciples noticed it, and when Peter said he was going fishing, they wanted to be with their brother they didn't want to leave him alone. The new reality of the Father's love and the family of God was growing in their hearts. So they all went along with Peter, letting him know by their presence that they loved him and that God had forgiven him. But again, Peter hadn't forgiven himself. Of course, Jesus knew this, which may explain why he suddenly appeared on the shore. It may also explain why, after Pe Peter jumped out of the boat and swam to the shore, instead of running up and embracing the Lord, more than likely he stopped. In other words, the sudden memory of his betrayal likely became a wall that kept him at a distance. Of course, he loved Jesus. There was a space, a separation that the Lord wanted to heal. The healing, however, would not only be for Peter, but for all of us who carry hidden wounds, which the Lord also wants to heal. So what does Jesus do? As we know from yesterday, he makes Peter and the disciples some breakfast. There's another detail from that breakfast we didn't cover yesterday. A detail that would have been very important to Peter. Before we get to it, however, we should briefly go back to an earlier scene in John's Gospel, the scene with the woman at the well. Recall that during Jesus' dialogue with the woman at the well, the Lord was not afraid to push in the deepest wound of her heart. Again, that wound was her dark well of shame that came from a history of broken relationships involving no less than five husbands. Jesus touched on that womb by telling the woman to go call her husband. And when she said she had no husband, Jesus pushed harder on the womb. You are right in saying I have no husband, but you've had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. What you said is true. But Jesus spoke to her with such tenderness and a look of so much love that the woman was healed, her shame disappeared, and with newfound dignity she became a fearless apostle to 
into her whole town. Now, back to Peter and the important detail at the breakfast. It's the charcoal fire that Jesus had built on the beach. Why is that important? Well, at what other place did we hear about a charcoal fire in John's Gospel? It was in the courtyard of Annas. That was the place where Peter warmed himself. That was the place where he denied Jesus three times. That was the place where he went from I am to I am not. That was the place where he lost his identity, broken his relationship with Christ. Now here, at another charcoal fire, Jesus is going to restore Peter's dignity and their friendship. Of course, on Jesus' side, all has already been forgiven, but Peter is still a mess inside, and his wounded heart needs surgery. So, after breakfast, Jesus makes the first incision. He does so by addressing Peter as Simon, son of John. Now, Jesus hadn't called Peter that name in three years. Hearing that old name, then, spoken by his Lord, must pierce poor Peter's heart. Peter knows it means that the Lord, who takes words seriously, has taken Peter's words seriously. What words? I am not. Are you his disciple? I am not. Are you Peter? I am not. Not anymore. I have denied my Lord. So Jesus calls him Simon because by denying Jesus, he's no longer Peter. And then it gets worse only because Jesus wants to make it better. Healing only comes when we get to the wound. Open it up and let love and mercy in. So Jesus says to Simon, do you love me more than these? Again, with those words, heartache. Peter knows what Jesus is referring to. In the upper room at the Last Supper, after Jesus had washed Peter's feet, Peter had boldly proclaimed in the front of the others, I will lay down my life for you. Jesus is now asking him, Do you love me more than this? In other words, Simon, you once indicated that you love me more than everyone else. Then you turned right around and were the only one who denied me. But Simon, I'm giving you another chance to tell me that you love me. Humbled, Peter replies, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus then responds, Well then, don't let that ever happen again. No, that's not what he says. Instead, he restores Peter's dignity by entrusting him with a greater responsibility, showing Peter that he trusts him despite everything. That is astounding mercy. For while we may forgive people after a betrayal, but with good reason no longer fully trust them, Jesus shows Peter not only that he forgives him, but that he also trusts him. In fact, he trusts him with what is dearest to him in all the world, his precious flock. Specifically, he says to Peter, feed my lambs. Then Peter, then Jesus repeats the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter responds, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus then says to him, feed my lambs. A third time, Jesus says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? With this, Peter is grieved. Three times Peter had denied Jesus. Three times. Three times Jesus has asked him, him if he loves him. Surely all this is not meant to torture poor Peter, but rather to rehabilitate him, to restore him to himself. It's exactly what Peter needs. He needs the opportunity to reaffirm his love and hear himself say it. 
He needs to know that the Lord trusts him. He also, also needs the humility that comes from his fall, so he can then wordedly lead the Lord's flock. Now Jesus knows exactly what we need for our healing, and while it's not always easy and rarely pain free, he does it with tenderness. For instance, he showed that tenderness to the woman at the well. He also showed it to Thomas, who got to touch the Lord's heart in the upper room. Here, he shows it to Peter not only by letting him retrieve what he had thrown away, but also by entrusting him with great responsibility. The Lord will show it to us too, that we also may be healed and restored in the Father's love and rest in the Father's house. So what can us need it? What hidden walls have we placed between ourselves and Jesus? Are there feelings of self-loathing, unworthiness, or hatred towards those who hurt us? Whatever they are, Jesus is saying to us, Do you want to be healed? Then don't go fishing. Give me, give me a drink instead. In other words, give me your pain. Give me your wounds. Give me your hurt. Give me your anger, your resentment, your bitterness. Let me hear it. Let me heal it. Then come follow me. Today's prayer, Jesus, heal me.